Hey, yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. Do you know what today is? Today is Wednesday, the best day of the week. You know why? Because it's comic book day, and that means we're going to be talking about my comic load for the week. Now, a uh, quick thing before we actually jump into this. This week was a humongous week. In addition to the DC comics that I usually get with the Zero Month, um, we also had a Star Trek comic that I picked up, or that I'm going to be picking up, before Watchmen, Spike, and the various other stuff that I have in my box. So I'm not going to be reviewing before Watchmen this week because I just didn't have enough money. Even with my credit that I get, I didn't want to spend too much money today. So I only have the zero issues for DC Comics today. Um, in addition to that, the Flash and Parademon figures came out. I haven't purchased them. They're at my store. They're waiting for me. Uh, but I will have a review of them up hopefully this week. Uh, probably this week, if not tomorrow. We'll, we'll see what goes down. But yeah, this week was a humongous week for zero issues. Uh, I think I got almost every single one of them. It might have been one or two that I didn't, but uh, in addition to that, we get the new Amethyst comic. So that's the new comic that comes out this week. We had Phantom Stranger in the first week of Zero uh, Month, and we had Team 7, now we have Amethyst. So let's just jump right into it, and let's start where we always start our day, with a little bit of Batman in our life. And that will be starting off with Nightwing. So Nightwing Zero Issue, I thought, would develop a little bit more into him becoming Nightwing and then eventually touching upon him as Batman, maybe a little, I don't know, who knows. But this is all him becoming Robin. The motivation for him becoming Robin um, and just his encounter, his first encounter of him being Robin um, and how him, him and Bruce met. And, it, you know, it's very traditional in the sense that it's similar to every other origin story we've had with Dick becoming Robin. Uh, he wants to go after Zuko, but he needs you know motivation and drive, and he needs to have a, a clear thoughts going into it, and he needs someone to train him, yada, yada, blah, 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 stuff that we all heard. Uh, the slight difference in this is mainly Lady Shiva shows up in this, and it is Lady Shiva that is kind of the big test for Dick Grayson. Um, his first real fight as Robin. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it, good. Um, there was a lot of, there was some touching moments in this, particularly when Dick asked uh, if he was a bad son to Alfred, because Bruce always goes and visits his, his parents' grave, and uh, Dick has yet to do it, because Dick is scared to. A very touching moment. Uh, the Robin suit, again, we saw it in Batgirl issue zero, but it's, we saw it in this, it's still probably one of the best Bat, uh, Robin suits there is, so I really like that they gave him this updated Robin suit. Um, and the pacing was pretty good up until the end. Bad, I felt as though they dropped the Zuko angle, or I could have completely missed it. And in addition to that, uh, the Lady Shiva fight was kind of short, but that's going to probably be picking up with the next issue, issue 13, where Lady Shiva comes back and tests him as Nightwing. Um, another thing I do want to point out that's good about this is he goes out and he vigilantes a lot, not as Robin, and Batman follows him and they work together, but they pretend that they don't know that they know who each other is. And, um, of course, Dick is able to discern who Batman is, which shows how much of a detective he is. Um, on a whole, whether or not you should get it, yeah, this is a great issue. Uh, other than the fact that it was a little um, quick at the end, it was... On a whole, very nicely done. Five out of five. Nightwing, pick it up. A Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue zero. This is all Jason Todd. Uh, this is really his whole life. It starts even before he was born. It showed how his parents met, um, his family life, and what eventually causes him to become Robin. And boy, is this a depressing issue. When Scott Bladell said that he... Uh, it was the most depressing thing he wrote he did. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, Jason getting beat to death with a crowbar. Actually, that that was what it was. It's more or less his family life, uh, how he had to kind of grow up early and be the man of the house when his parents weren't being parents. Uh, just to paint you a picture, his mother was constantly doing drugs and drinking and he would, you know, he'd be there and he would revive her and he would watch over her when she would OD. 
uh, as like a four-year-old. And when his father would stumble home drunk, uh, Jason would help him into the house. A lot of people say Jason's an asshole, but he's probably one of the most caring people out there. He's just a broken person. And there's another part in this where Jason's beating up a, a bad guy and Batman's trying to stop him. And the inner dialogue says, you know, I don't know what happened. I just lost myself. I guess I figured I needed to beat the old father out of me before I could accept a new one. Really depressing stuff. Um, and I guess that goes into the good because it really does touch at the reader. Um, it's very well placed. It's, uh, the dialogue is good. And it, it was a nice, good origin for Jason. Bad? None, really. This was a very good issue. This also gets a 5 out of 5. Uh, uh, but like I said, depressing. Very depressing. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, it does handle kind of how Jason came back and, uh... I'm pleased on how they handled it. So let me just adjust the camera there. Catwoman issue number zero. So we get a little bit of backstory of Catwoman. And we learn that Catwoman had some legitimate jobs as well as she had some illegitimate jobs. Although the legitimate jobs were more or less for her to find out about her past. Because she was raised in an orphanage. She doesn't even really know her real name. Selena Kyle isn't really her name. So we learn a little bit about that. Um, but that's really the gist of it her issue is her trying to find out about her brother and trying to find out about her past because she does have a brother. So good. Um, I do kind of like how Selena has this motivation to her more than that. She's a kleptomaniac. She's looking for her brother. She's trying to find out who she is. She's very much a lost person. And I do kind of like that. I thought the art was pretty good, and I like the eventual evolution of the Catwoman costume. It starts off as just a black kind of jumpsuit and eventually evolves into what it evolves into. Uh, bad, I felt it was kind of all over the place when it came down to telling the story. Like, it would warp into the past and then warp into the present, and then I never knew really where the story was going at certain points. So the pacing was a off a lot. Um, and the eventual turn into Catwoman, I, I, I kind of like the idea that Catwoman stole because she needed to survive on the streets. Um, but I, I don't know if she would actually turn into Catwoman to find out about her past. Um, it, it felt like a little confusing issue towards the end. On a whole, 2.5 out of 5. It was okay, but I think it was just confusing. It, it, it confused me a little, in a way. Uh, Batwoman, issue number zero. So, you know, we don't need to go over Batwoman's origin too many more times because we've done it a million times beforehand. But uh, this does, again, go over her origin. But more or less, it tells it through her perspective. It's not through the our perspective, but her perspective. And, you know, how her father was a great influence and her sister a great influence in her life and her development and i'm going to leave it at that because i don't want to reveal too much about this for people that haven't read uh batwoman's origin because uh, well it's a definitely a tragic one a uh, good the dialogue that was done along with this was fantastic uh the internal dialogue for cat Kane was just so good uh and all the, the traumatic stuff that she put herself through and the emotional stuff she put herself through uh, really was good stuff and very nicely handled. Uh, the the overall pacing of the book was good. And if you never read Batman uh, Batwoman before, you understand Batwoman after reading this. Bad. Um, I don't think there was any bad per se. If I could uh, harp on anything, one, they got Batman's costume wrong a few times. In the New 52, he's only had that one costume. But they had him have the yellow bat emblem and the underwear at one point. But that's that's an artistic mistake. I can't really hold that against the comic too much. Uh, another bad is... Well, no. that That's the only thing that uh, could throw me off. Uh, Batwoman, I will give a... A 5 out of 5. It was a really solid issue. Uh, moving on, we have Birds of Prey, issue number 0. So, this is the origin of the Birds of Prey. And the, the question has always been kind of floating around with people is, well, was Barbara Gordon involved with the Birds of Prey beforehand? The answer is yes. Was she involved as Oracle? The answer is no. Uh, Barbara Gordon joined up with the Birds of Prey, and they, they kind of made the little shindig 
in the little get together in kind of an odd, interesting way. See, everyone kind of met at the Iceberg Lounge. Um, Starling was working there. Black Canary was trying to clean up for her past and doing some undercover work, and Batgirl was well, Batgirling. She was vigilanteing. She was doing what you know the Batman family does, plain flat and simple. And of course, this event brings them all together. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, I really do like the new Black Canary, the new 52. I like how she's not tied down by Green Arrow. I like how she's not tied down by the Justice League. She is a, a badass in this comic, and she's a badass throughout the whole entire comic. Uh, not just this issue, but the, the whole entire comic in general. She's one of the reasons that makes me want to continue reading Team 7, but I just don't think I have the money for that. Who knows? Maybe I might pick it up on the side. But um, The motivation for Black Canary is great here. Uh, two is, I also like that we get to see another variation on the Batgirl costume. So the, the costume that we saw in issue zero, the before she got shot costume, wasn't the only one she had. She had several different ones in Evolutions. The one in this, uh, looks pretty much the same as the one she has now, only, um, know how she has the purple here and here, and on the, uh, inner thighs, it's instead yellow. But, I mean, uh, the costume looked good. And I liked also that the team came together before, I mean, there was a Birds of Prey team before there was actually a Birds of Prey team. Bad. I can't really think of too much bad, per se. The only thing I would have liked to see is I would have liked to see maybe some Oracle in there. It's not going to bother me as much as it's going to bother some other people. Because I'm in full support of Barbara being Barbara. I, I like that she was Oracle, but I, I, I've always known her as Batgirl. When people ask, you know, who is Batgirl, Barbara Gordon comes to my head. You know, Cassandra Cain and uh, Stephanie Brown are obviously were great Batgirls, but Barbara always comes to my mind. But it still would have been nice to see maybe after they came together, like a few glimpses of them working together and then her working as Oracle working with them together. But, hmm. Um, on a whole, this was a great issue. This was a, a good issue. 4.5 out of 5. Uh, really fun. Supergirl, issue 0. So, all those questions about Supergirl's past are answered here. Who shot her father? Um, why she was sent her out into the, the, into the ship, out onto, uh, onto Earth, blah, blah, blah. I'm screwing up my words. Uh, Pretty much to save her from Krypton's explosion. Uh, the rift between her father and um, her uncle. And really, this just paints a picture of what happened beforehand. Why she sent to Earth. All the questions that we kind of had. Uh, good is... Uh, I think it was a well-paced, well-told story. I think it really did kind of do everything that was necessary for a Supergirl origin. Bad... It's, you know, I, I don't think it was, it's, it's tough, because most of the stuff we could have predicted, except for who shot her father, I mean, it wasn't until it actually happened, I'm like, I bet it, oh, it was. Um, it, 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 I don't know, I felt as though too much was revealed to us too quickly, and uh, not enough of it shocked me. Except for who shot her father, not enough of it shocked me. Um. Although there was some emotional parts in this, especially when uh, her mother saying goodbye to her. That was pretty rough. So, but on a whole, it was an okay issue. I will give it a 3 out of 5. I mean, it didn't do anything bad, but it didn't do anything to wow me. Um, Green Lantern, New Guardians, issue number 0. So this is more or less set now, in the present day, right after Hal and Sinestro get sucked up into the Earth or into their ring or wherever they could actually be right now. I think they're in a ring, but um, basically Kyle is looking for some help, and he, he goes to Carol for it, and uh, Carol is, you know, she's waiting up for Hal, Hal hasn't returned, uh, she's so desperate and upset that she goes through his locker and she finds a wedding ring, looks like Hal was looking to propose, and this shocks her, uh, and she sees a green light coming down, she thinks it's Hal, but of course it's Kyle, nice fake out there, nice fake out there, um, but Kyle basically says, I need some help. Can you help me? And she says, ah, it's fine. I'll, I'll help you out. So Carol and him go work together. Eventually, they find out the final fate of Sinestro and uh, Hal Jordan. And it, it, Carol Ferris, through some power that I didn't know the Star Sapphires had, allowed 
Kyle to see his future and his pivotal role in the Third Army. I think it's going to be Kyle Rayner that's going to be the star in the Third Army story uh, alongside Baz because, boy, Kyle is going to become God, basically. I mean, he is the chosen one, but wow. <laughs> Wow. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Um, I think the new team up is, as you can see here, the introduction of Atrocitus and uh, Carol Ferris and LaFreeze were a good idea. I also like Carol Ferris's new costume. It's a little bit more respectable, but it still looks good. You know, basically any of the skin portions were covered up by black. Uh, it just looks very nice. I particularly like how her eyes are always glowing, which was cool. And her reaction to how dying and possibly proposing to her, felt very natural, and it was emotional. Bad, it's just Carol, and it's just uh, Kyle. There's no one else in there. No LaFreeze, no St. Walker, no one. It's just those two, and I, I kind of wanted to see the whole team kind of come together. I, I would have settled for, you know, Carol and uh, Kyle kind of going around doing their things, and then Kyle just goes, hey, guys. Get your butts down here. I need you. And then all the, the, the other lanterns show up. I, whatever random thing. Yeah. Can you just imagine Kyle like makes a construct on a phone. He's like, hey, St. Walker, what are you up to? Not much. No, just chilling. Hey, could you come down here and help me with the zombie apocalypse that's going to be happening? Oh, thanks. So, hey, could you just text uh, Atrocitus and LaFreeze and let them know? Okay, thank you. Bye. But uh, no, I would have liked to see more of the team. Uh, on the whole, this was a pretty good issue. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I enjoyed it. There was faults to it, but it did get its job done, and I did like Kyle and Carol through this. Uh, on to our new comic, uh, Sword and Sorcery, featuring Amethyst, issue number 0. So, basically, there is the gem world, and the gem world is in chaos because Amethyst... Aunt, and I, I don't know if Amethyst is actually called this in here. Um... Uh, let me see if her name... Uh, Amy. Uh, let's just call her Amy because it's simpler that way. Amy's aunt is controlling Gemworld, and only she can get the power back, but she doesn't know she's from Gemworld. She was always raised in the real world, and her mother sends her there, and she goes with her mother on her 17th birthday, and it's only when she turns 17, apparently 17 is important, that's when she can have the power to take the power of Gemworld back. A lot of stuff is going on here. Uh, in addition to that, we get a backup to a Beowulf comic, and it's just Beowulf kind of set in a post-apocalyptic future. Kind of. Whatever. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. I'm going to focus more or less on the Amethyst stuff, uh, seeing that I really didn't care for the Beowulf story, only because it was set in post-apocalyptic future, and I just don't care about future stories. Hey, that's just me. I don't want to know how the future turns out. Oh, if the world gets ruined, I guess Batman fucked up. No, I mean, uh, I just don't care for those stories. That's why I never liked Kamani or the Legion. But uh, the Amethyst story, uh, good. Uh, the character was very likable. Um, the story was very interesting. I like the concept of the gem world. I like that all this stuff can happen on this alternate world. Um, it kind of has a science to it. See, magic, a lot of people misunderstand magic uh, mag and how to handle magic. Magic, you think anything can happen because it's magic. You can do whatever you want, but you have to have a certain science to it. Uh, one fictional medium that does this very well is actually Harry Potter. There's rules and regulations to using certain spells and how they're used, and there's a science to it. What I liked about Amethyst is that there's a science to the magic of that world. There's rules and regulations on how things are supposed to work in that world. So it's kind of cool there. Uh, the art was really nice. And uh, like, and the, the pacing was very good too. On whole way you should get it. Um, I, I had high hopes for Amethyst. Uh, for so Sword and Sorcery. Because I kind of like those kind of stories. Swords and Sorcery. Um, and not only did it reach my expectations. But it went higher. Uh, Sword and Sorcery, I'm going to give a 4.5 out of 5. It was really good. I really did enjoy this. Um, who is it? Christy Marks and, uh, you know, Tony Bernard. Although Tony Bernard did the, the backup story. Uh, Christy Marks, good job. Good for you. Uh, that was a good story. Um, pick it up. Pick it up. 
if uh, just get the issue zero and it should have you hooked if you enjoy that kind of stuff if you enjoy demonites and you enjoy dungeons and dragons or world of warcraft or league of legends or uh, you know anything else for that matter you're going to enjoy that blue beetle issue number zero so this is really more or less telling the story of where the scarab went before it hit jaime that's it um Good, bad, whether I what do you want me to do? Tell the whole freaking history for the scarab? He goes to like twenty people before he hits Jaime. It's like a Green Lantern ring. Oh whore. It's been with everyone. So um yeah, on a whole, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good is i do like the exhibition, the backstory for the scarab, the origin of it, where it goes and how it kind of touched upon different places in the space DC universe. Um it also kind of gives the scarab a little bit more of a motivation and a, a, a drive to it than, hey, I'm a technology's evil piece of shit thing. No, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, and I like it. It's also kind of a throwback to the scarab back in the day because originally the scarab was sent to the earth in ancient times. This scarab was sent back, it looks like, in pre-modern times, it, but hey... I, I, I thought the exhibition and how it was handled was pretty good. Uh, you can only do so much. You know, super, this is kind of like Soup Boy. Blue Beetle has a huge damper on it because we already know his origin. So you got to do something. Um, so, you know, Keith Giffins and Tony Bernard did what they could with this story. Uh, bad is it, it was... It was Okay, it was not necessary. Uh, I did like how it connected to Justice League International Annual Number One, but yeah, it it was there. Um, three out of five. I'll give three because they put in effort and it was it was a good story for what it was. We have four titles left, and all of them are Justice League related. Wonder Woman issue number zero. So this is really Wonder Woman training as a young girl and training with Ares. Uh, Ares takes her under his tutelage and trains her basically in the art of war. Although he's not called Ares in this. Actually, he's, I think, the only Greek god so far that's been called by his Roman name, War. But I'm going to call him Ares because I like Ares. Ares is a good name. Plus, my zodiac sign is Ares, so, yeah. Um... So basically, Ares trains her, and he puts her through the ultimate test. A test that will truly define who is Wonder Woman. Good, bad, whether or not you get should get it. A good, I really like the portrayal of Ares in this. I liked Ares pre-New 52, but I also like this new Ares, because this new Ares is unique. Uh, he really looks down upon Wonder Woman as not only a student or a sibling, because technically they're siblings, but also kind of as a daughter in a way. Or a younger sister, well, obviously she is his younger sister, but he really has a fond affection for her. Uh, not necessarily because what he wants her to do, but because she learns and she has faith in him and he cares for her, which is interesting. I also like the fact that war wants to end war. He doesn't like being war, or he, he's okay with being war, but he thinks War is the end of conflict. When, you know, he has Wonder Woman basically to strike down a foe, or when he would strike down Wonder Woman, he says to her, the reason there is war is to end conflict. It's not the best way to end conflict, but it is the most guaranteed end way to end conflict. So it's an interesting methodology to her, him, and it was especially interesting on his reaction when Wonder Woman made the decision that she did. Bad? Done. This was a great story. It would have been nice to see her actually go to man's world, but we know that story. So it was a nice little story for Wonder Woman, and I enjoyed it. Five out of five. Brian Azmarello knocking out of the ballpark again. And again, you know this. Brian Azmarello looks like war. So well done story. Um, Captain Adam, issue zero. The end of Captain Adam. Um, I'm going to comment on Captain Adam as a series also. This is basically him becoming Captain Adam. Him going through the experiment, big explosion, blah, 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 blah. And then he has the powers of the demigod, basically. And Dr. Manhattan rolled into one. Standard Captain Adam story. Uh, good, bad, whether you should get it. It was a safe story, and it told itself uh, very nicely. And I like that, actually, that it was a safe story with Captain Adam. Bad as it was a safe story and it told itself nicely. Uh, this would have been better as issue number one, I think. Uh, 
but you know, on a whole, I'll give it a three out of five. It was still enjoyable, and you know, the thing about Captain Adam as a series is I picked it up on the side and I stuck with it. It started off very slow. Um, it really did start slow, and there was some high concept stuff that JT Kroll was doing, and I think that shunned some people away. But I think they also missed out because it was a good series for the most part. The story was well told. The characters were enjoyable. And Captain Adam felt like a very human character. He felt very humanized despite having all these godlike powers. I think my favorite moment is when he's uh, watching uh, his co-worker, that woman, and he's saying like he really he, he wanted to get to know her better and he wanted to know what her favorite color is and was kind of hoping it would be blue. And it's just simple stuff like that. Um, even though the title's getting canceled, JT Kroll, I commemorate you. This was a good series. Um, it's sad to see it go. But like all things, it will come to an end. Two titles left. Next is the whopping $6 DC Universe Presents Issue Zero. Now there are, let me count, one, two, three, four, five stories in this. And they're supposed to all be the characters that were getting canceled um, the first time around, the first round cancellation. So Hawk and Dove, OMAC, uh, Blackhawks, uh, Static, and Mr. Terrific. However, Static is replaced with Dead Man, so Static doesn't have a story, Dead Man has a story instead. Uh, it, this would just take too long to go into with each and every single story because there's basically five stories here. On a whole, I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, the Hawk and Dove stuff and the Black Hawk stuff was fun. Uh, the Mr. Terrific stuff was okay, and the, the OMAX stuff was okay too. The Dead Man stuff, interestingly enough, was the only thing I really didn't care for. The Dead Man DC Universe Presents story was really good. Took some time to get going, but it was really good. I picked it up after I started picking up DC Universe Presents. Um, but I really didn't care for a story here. It was okay. Uh, so yeah, 3.5 out of 5. On to the last title this week. I know, I'm coming up to a half hour here. Justice League, issue number 0. So this issue is dedicated all to our good friend Billy Batson, or better known as Shazam. Um... And I'm glad they're going with the name Shazam in this. So basically, he meets up with the wizard Shazam. And he was one of the original wizards for the, the Council of Eternity that, that you know, banished um, the Question and Phantom Stranger and um, Pandora. And basically, it is what you think. He gets his powers, and he is like a kid in the candy shop. He has the powers of a god, basically. So he's going around and he's displaying it in various different ways and really learning the limitations of his powers. Interesting thing to note is Black Adam does not show up in this. Black Adam is supposed to be in the next issue as a backup story. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it, the art is really good in this. Really nicely done. Um, I think the story was well paced. I think Billy reacting to getting his powers was actually very natural for what Billy was. And I particularly like the ending and how things, you know, with Freddy, Billy, and, you know, him having his powers. Bad. I would have liked to see a nice showdown with uh, Black Adam, but it's probably best that we save that for another issue because you don't want to move things too quickly. This makes me want to see a Captain Marvel series continuously. I know they're playing around with it as a backup, but do it as a continuous series. Uh, this was great. Another 5 out of 5. Um, this week had some great comics. It had some okay comics, too. It had some pretty good comics this week. Uh, which one will be my favorite is the question. Uh, you're just going to have to wait and see, because I will talk about it in my Andrew Petter Picks of the Weeks. Uh, as I said, sorry there's no Before Watchmen. I would have bought it, but again, I... I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 titles. A couple of them were three ninety nine titles, and one of them was a $6 title. So, um, it's quite a pretty penny. So, in saying that, uh, hopefully maybe in one of my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks, I can review Night Owl and Comedian, because those are the two that I missed. But I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out. For now.